Hello, welcome to another video. I am going to be doing uh, another photo stories video. i uh, just like to quickly say thank you for everyone who's commented on my last couple of videos. I really appreciate it. Um, today I'm going to do some more photos, like chatting about photos, um, but I'm going to try and do more of like a roundup of a month. So I've been trying to do a monthly blog on my website like monthly roundup of photos photos this month it's been great to do but it's a lot of kind of work a lot of time a lot of fiddling of things that i don't always have the time for at the moment um the processing of the photos is fine the you know thinking what to say about them is fine but the actual typing it up and formatting it and things that's that really takes up the most time so i'm going to try and move that over to here and do it as a YouTube. So, you know, do it as a little YouTube segment, maybe. So I'm just going to experiment and see how this goes. Um, <laughs> I've narrowed it down to about 30 photos. So fingers crossed, this will work as like a roundup video. Um, I'm going to start with some bird photos. What a surprise. Me take bird photos who would know who would know who would who would expect that no one um <laughs> and for some reason it's decided to go in a backwards order but that's fine i will just remember to go left facts you didn't need to know um beginning with this gorgeous bird this is what is known in the birding community as a little brown job or an lbj if you ever see that term that's what it means um this is a it basically refers to like small brown birds that could be honestly a number of things. Um, this one is a female stone chat. She is stuffing her face with delicious grubs, um, getting nice and plump for the winter. And she was she lives basically down the road from me. Um, <laughs> we're mates. We uh, we hang out sometimes. Mostly me taking her picture, and she doesn't really know what I'm doing. But you know. Um, and uh, yeah, you can tell that it's kind of in a little bit of a built up area um, with the like railings in the background there. But uh, thankfully the camera, well, me, me and my camera settings have made them blurry so they don't distract too much from her. This background, however, might just distract a bit too much from her, but I do quite like this picture anyway, but kind of because of that. Um, I believe this is like the, the, the cafe seats behind, that that's what they are, that's the colours. Um, so yeah, a bit of a bit of a different background to sort of contrast the little brown, brown job in the foreground. Um, this is the same same day, this is the same kind of shoot um, with this gorgeous black back goal, great black back goal. Um, it's not as sharp as I would like it but I like the overall kind of moment with the, the wave and the action and they're just the best, they're just one of the best seabirds, they're really cool, like look how powerful that looks, they're just epic. Um, not a bird photo, not a wildlife photo, but a few people paddleboarding. Um, I can't really help but to document what other people are doing sometimes down by the sea. Um, I feel like everyone enjoys the sea in a different way and takes something different from it, but it's nice to kind of see everyone has that kind of connection to it. So sometimes I do take a couple of shots like this. Um, and then I moved on to photographing some beach birds. Um, this is a rock pipit. They make a sound that's kind of like beep 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 and that's kind of that's where they got their name and they hang around rocks so rock pipit there we go. <laughs> um, so this one was um, trying to catch lots of different insects and bugs uh, that were kind of hanging around all the all the debris debris on the beach um, and uh, I love this shot I wish I wish that my camera that my lens had just been slightly just slightly up just like that much just to make this framing a bit nicer but um yeah it was uh really really going for the for the bug catching <laughs> running along the, the the rocks and jumping around um and not just the rock pipit but also a pied wagtail which was awesome and again you can kind of see it's kind of stretching out to try and get the flies um i also noticed afterwards really that it had this kind of slight deformity or injury on its on its leg but it seemed to be getting on perfectly fine so there we go very adaptable little birds um and yeah i thought this was quite a cute one just sort of looking 
I don't know. Maybe it saw a fly down there. Maybe it, maybe it didn't. Well, I don't know. Um, <laughs> while I was taking these, I was actually lying down on the, the, the pebbles. It's kind of, it's the only way you can really get on a bird or an animal's perspective. Um, I would say it's slightly more comfy than the concrete from the last video, but uh, the difficulty thing, the difficulty was I was on a slope on on the on the pebbles, and then not too long after this, I did start to kind of slide, and you can't really get your grip; you just keep sliding. So at this point, I think it probably spotted me, um, <laughs> but it carried on anyway. You know, they kind of they're fairly adapted to humans around around the beaches anyway. Um, this I really like because you can really see how focused that wagtail is on that particular fly. You can really tell. Um, so that was really cool. Uh, just, you know, walking along a log shot. Um, action shot of it catching a fly. And I think this is one of my favourites from the day because you can just see so many of the flies and they kind of add to the atmosphere of the photo. Um, I probably need to brighten the shadows on the bird a little bit to bring out some detail but yeah pretty happy with that shot. Now I took these photos on my very favourite lens that I saved up for a long time for um, which is a 200 to 500 lens. Unfortunately while I was on this shoot I realised that it was having an error in communication between the lens and the camera and it wasn't doing it all the time but it was doing it enough that I thought if I carry on using it as it is it might break so I have since then had to send my lens, my favourite lens, away and I'm quite sad looking at these photos because I will want it back so badly. Um, so yeah, so it's it's gone away for repair. Obviously we are in lockdown in the UK so that's, I, I don't know how long that's going to take. Um, this was before they announced it so it's a bit, I'm a bit gutted <laughs> to not have it with me but it didn't, it hasn't stopped me, it hasn't stopped me. I have just had to resort to taking photos with other lenses which I don't really like like I'm, I'm a bit I'm a bit reluctant to do I know I shouldn't be so this is probably going to be a good lesson for me but I've had to you know take landscapes and macro photos and as someone who loves bird photography like that's the thing that really got me into photography just I I, I was reluctant but I've pushed through I pushed through that that mental boundary and here we have slugs of course um <laughs> yeah this was kind of a I, th I feel like this was a bit of a desperate day where I was like I need to get outside and I need to take pictures of something anything and I really couldn't find a lot to take pictures of that kind of just got me into the creative zone uh but slugs slugs were the ones apparently <laughs> slugs and snails um this was up a quite a steep hill some nearby woodland and um yeah i just saw the snails the slugs and the snails and i thought you know what let's make some kind of i don't know almost a story with it almost like show them in their little world because it kind of looks a bit to me like i like this shot especially but i think yeah i really like this one it's quite it's quite fairy tale-y you know it's kind of like they could be these giant in their world they probably feel like in their world they probably feel like giants and that's what i like i do like this about macro photography and i forget how much I enjoy it until I do it and then I'm like actually yeah this is a really great format to work in this is a really great you know perspective to take I'm just I'm so used to telephoto lenses I need to kind of this has probably been a good thing for me to break the mm, codependence <laughs> to break my dependence on my telephoto lens to get a good shot but um yeah so I had a nice uh hour or so I guess taking pictures of various um snails and uh slugs and it was um it's quite a wet day and not long after this the heavens opened and i had to put all of the waterproof you know all the gear had to go away the waterproof cover had to go out come out um i kind of swam home i suppose and i was drenched but i am glad that i got out and did this because i just needed to yeah get it out of my system to take some pictures and create something um and i think also like snails and slugs i think that's my that i think i need to meditate on these like this this way of living because we've just gone back into lockdown and i just need to slow down so they seemed very appropriate the 
final shoot that I did this month was not happy. Um, unfortunately, well, where I live, there's a cove where lots of debris gets washed in. And unfortunately, after some high winds and waves, debris got washed in and it didn't just bring in the usual seaweed and litter. It brought in some dead animals, including dolphins which was extremely sad at the time, and I'm not going to show more photos than this. If you want to see more photos, uh, there's a link to an article with them in, in the description. Um, it's not actually, it's not been confirmed how these dolphins died that I know of yet. I think they did collect a couple of, um, collect a couple of them from the from marine strandings for people to do kind of autopsies on. So they could have, you know, <laughs> they could have possibly been tangled in uh, nets or debris or they could have swallowed plastic but it's also possible that they died of a natural cause or a different cause and then just got caught up. It was weird because I did end up sending these to press and they did end up getting into paper uh, into the paper and that for me has been good to have a contact there and to have another kind of outlet for my photography that potentially I can get a kind of income from um, but um, yeah, it's a bit of a weird silver lining to have the, my way in to that sort of market, if you will, was through photos of dead dolphins. But this is 2020 and we have to take every silver lining that we can get. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, I've yeah, I've, I've, it was it's, it's a sad situation, but I feel like it was important to get the images and get them out there to be seen so um, if you do want to I, I can understand if you don't want to see more but if you are interested in seeing more this is just one of a distant shot there's closer images more detailed images if you're interested then yeah you can take a look um, unfortunately I'm going to end on that really lovely depressing note um, <laughs> what can I say it's another great day in 2020 so um, yeah but I hope you've enjoyed this and I yeah, I think I'll try and keep it going as a monthly video. If you like the sound of that, let me know. I promise there won't be more dead animals. Hopefully, hopefully there won't. I can't promise anything. Can't promise anything. But I will try and keep it to alive animals if if I can. Cool. Okay. Um. Hope you have a, a decent good day wherever you are. Hope you're surviving. Everyone in lockdown. I hope you're um. Yeah not going mad <laughs> um i feel like youtube was kind of made for these situations i uh, have always found great people on youtube um so keep looking around youtube if you're if you're not sure if you get stuck i recommend youtube there's a lot of cool channels here and it's cool for me to finally be actually contributing because i've been watching this stuff for years like i've been watching people chat to their cameras and it's nice to actually do it myself for once so yeah fun okay i'm gonna go but thank you for watching and yeah like and subscribe guys